just make sure your agent is willing to play nice. I promise you that will also extremely benefit you when it comes to getting your offer accepted. If you're a buyer, they would have already told you to put it on the market before even showing you houses. And if you're the seller, they would tell you, let's check to make sure that it is listed before we even consider that offer. What's going on guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Living in El Paso. I'm Alexa Peña. I'm a local realtor here in El Paso. I'm also an investor and I happen to be one of the top producing agents. And my goal and my goal only for this overall channel is to give you education and to help you in your real estate journey. So with that being said, in today's talk, I really want to dive deep into how to get your offer accepted. Now this is going to be applicable for both buyers and sellers because I will be sharing very useful things that if you're a seller, you should be looking for from a buyer's agent to submit with their client's offer. And if you are a buyer, then of course, making sure that your buyer's agent is doing for you. So with that being said, let's dive deep into today's conversation. Now at this point, I sound like a broken record because I will always tell you to ensure that you are doing your due diligence, which Ever company you decide to work with, just make sure that you're working with somebody that is going to be your advisor, your guide throughout the transaction. Step number one to this guide is going to be ensuring that you're working with the right agent. Because if you're not, then none of the things that we're gonna talk about are going to make sense because one of them is going to end up falling short and it's going to lead to you not getting your offer accepted, which is the whole reason you're watching this video to begin with. So ensuring you're working with the right agent is super, super, super important, okay? Now, the second tip we're gonna talk about today is going to be they need to make sure that they are pitching your offer. What do I mean by this? So I've had it happen time and time again where we are in a situation where we're getting offers. Let's say we have a very desirable listing in an area where it's getting a lot of traffic. We've had over, let's say, 40 showings at this point. And now we have five offers that have actually came into the, our, our inbox. And at the end of the day, as these showings are happening still because we haven't actually accepted anything, right? I have one of two things happen. Either the agents that submit an offer actually call me and let me know, Alexa, we're submitting an offer. What is it that your you know, seller is looking for? We wanna make sure that we're really positioning this in the best way possible. And if there's something that your seller is looking for and if my buyer is able to do, I wanna be sure that we make that as part of the offer. So that is one side. The other side is the agents just send it and pray for the best and don't even bother to confirm that we've received the offer. Don't even bother to make sure that we presented the offer. They literally just like send the offer and hope for the best. And this is why if you are a buyer ensuring that you're getting the right agent, I mean, we've talked about it, it's both sides. It's important to make sure you have the right agent, but especially in a situation like this, if your, buyer, if your buyer's agent is not even taking the time to pick up the phone and call the listing agent and say, hey, how are you? We just wanna make sure you got our offer. My client is very excited about your property. We really wanna make sure that you know you got the offer. Is there anything that maybe we can change? Preferably they called before because then that way we can share with you anything that we are allowed to share because of course that's gonna be in our client's best interest, in this case the seller. But it's important for you to have that person that's willing to take that time out of the day to call the other side to really advocate for you. Now, the third thing to this little puzzle we're using today is going to be making sure that your agent is not a jerk. There's no other way to put it, okay? I have had it happen on both sides of the equation where I work with a listing agent that is extremely rude, literally will not answer the phone. I will call, they won't answer, and I get it. Sometimes that happens, okay? We're all busy, I understand. But at least have like an assistant that can answer me back or at least text me back. They won't, like they literally will not answer at all. And then you're like, hey, I submitted an offer, crickets. And then you're like, hey, just wanna make sure I have an update for my client. Kids. And you're just like, what's going on, right? There are agents like that also on the buyer side. They'll call, let's say I'm being the listing agent on a situation, and they call with like the most attitude. Like, hey, when are you gonna present the offers? My client is waiting. And you're just like, who is this? And they're like, 
oh, well, we sent an offer and we just want to know if you're going to accept the offer or not. I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, play nice is your best friend because whether you realize this or not, and if you're an agent watching this video, because I know there's agents watching these videos, um, just be nice with one another. Like I get it in this industry, there's a lot of unfortunately animosity and I get it. You know, they think the whole like to each their own, but honestly, we're supposed to be helping each other. Like you have your client, I have my client, our clients want to buy each other's property. We should play nice. And of course it's about negotiations. And of course there's certain things that you can't disclose. But at the bottom line, being kind to one another and communicating like there is a human being under like behind that phone call, it will take you a long way. And I am telling you, it happens where I will get a client, a buyer's agent that calls me with that attitude. And then when I'm presenting the offers, if that offer was also not that strong, I will disclose everything to my clients and I will say, hey, and I just want to put it out there. This buyer's agent was very difficult to talk to over the phone. And that's already a red flag. So if you're working with a buyer's agent that is like that, I'm telling you, it's not in your best interest. And I will be the first to admit when I first got started in the industry, I didn't know any better. I didn't know any like etiquette about like how I thought that I was protecting my buyer. So I had to be mean with the other, you know, opponent side. Um, and I, I, I burned bridges that way because it was not helpful. It was me calling people with attitude when that person had the same goal, which was protect their client. And I could have came across a very different way. Now I see everybody and whenever they message me about like seeing a property, I'm like, thank you for showing. I appreciate it. If I don't answer them, I text them because I know how important it is to play nice and be on both sides of the puzzle, right? The little equation that we're trying to work out here. So just make sure your agent is willing to play nice. I promise you that will also extremely benefit you when it comes to getting your offer accepted. Now, another important part of getting your offer accepted is making sure you're using the right forms. I'm telling you, there's a lot of agents out there that are not using the right forms. And if you're representing yourself, make sure you know what form you're supposed to use. Because unfortunately, if you make an offer and the forms that are being used are not the right forms, what are the chances that your agent is going to drop the ball in other parts of the transaction? And that already can be a red flag. So if I'm presenting these offers and I see that one of the forms is actually not updated correctly, or it's not the correct form, or it's not, you know, written the correct way, I'm going to tell my client and grant it, you know, take it with a grain of salt because there's everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has bad days, but if there's something very major, I'm going to tell my client, like, look, this person seems to be a little bit newer. I'm not quite sure if they really advise their client correctly on how this offer was actually being written. You want to be careful with that. It happened with another agent where essentially the buyer's agent, my friend is the listing agent for that property. The buyer's agent essentially came in, made an offer, was willing to say that their client was going to waive the appraisal, was going to be, you know, paying more out of pocket. They signed the um, addendum for that. And at the end of the day, they came back and said, uh, we did not know that if the appraisal didn't appraise, we weren't gonna actually, that we were having to pay that out of pocket. Uh, we were like, what in the world? Like, did, did you not explain that to your client? Like, what happened? Oh, well, we thought that it was going to appraise, so we were not worried about it. So making sure that your agent is knowledgeable or yourself, if you're representing yourself, which why would you, you should have somebody advising you and guiding you, but that's a whole other conversation. But if you are, make sure that your docs are all correct. Okay. Now another tip here, and this is something that I've mainly seen with like the older generation real realtors. Um, I was about to say realtors, don't realtors um is they are not necessarily tech savvy and the reason this is important is because if you have a document let's say you're the seller and you want to accept that offer okay and you're like okay we're, we're going to accept that offer you know i need to be able to get that document executed for us like pronto make sure that we get the docs back so they can deliver the earnest money so they can deliver the option money if it's applicable so they can order the inspection so they can order the appraisal we need to move fast right Let's say you tell your buyer's agent, hey, I need you to send this offer for me, Tom, please. I really want you to send the offer. I love the house. And let's say we have a deadline of 6 p.m., right? No more offers after Monday at 6 p.m. If your buyer's agent didn't send you that offer on time because they're not tech savvy, because they don't know how to use dot loop, because they wanted to meet with you in order for you to actually sign the documents, 
you just cost yourself a property that potentially you could have actually gotten the offer accepted on, but because your agent didn't know how to move quickly, speed was against you. So making sure your agent is actually tech savvy is super helpful, okay? And ensuring that you actually know like, okay, hey, I wanna get my offer accepted, like go over the offer with me, explain to me like, what is a contingency, go over with me, what is an option period, go over with me, what is earnest money, how much should I do, what's the typical? All of these themes are so helpful. It happened recently where we actually were helping the seller sell their home and there was another agent that they were gonna buy the house with in another market, right? So I talked to that agent, I'm like, hey, everything's going great over here, we're about to close, we should be having funding authorization within the next two days, so you should be perfectly fine to buy the house over there, you know, him buying the house over there. And he's like, yeah, well, it's because we're gonna make an offer, but um, he doesn't have the full amount for the earnest money. Um, and he, wa I told him to do $2,000, but you know, um, he only has 500 that he wants to do. And, and this is a military client, okay? So my military clients, like all my clients are very important to me, but I've, I helped him buy other properties already. I've helped him sell property. So when this person tells me that, you know, he, because of some situation financially that he was waiting on additional income to get deposited into his account. He only had 500 available at that point. And he didn't think in his head to actually just say, hey, let's just write up the earnest money for $500. There's no other offers that are literally on the table right now. He was thinking, again, the other agent, that they needed to do $2,000. That is not true. Like. Earnest money is negotiable, just like anything in a real estate transaction. So if you have somebody that's telling you, you need to do whatever it is that they're telling you, you wanna know why. Because sometimes, sometimes it is applicable and it is required. Like for instance, if we're doing a builder uh, contract and they're requiring a 1% or a 2,500 earnest money deposit, then that's just their, their rules, that's what they need. But for the most part, it's negotiable. And if you don't have that amount or you want to do more because you want to show you're serious about it, then tell them to explain to you so that you know what you're getting yourself into. And this goes hand in hand with my next tip, which is when you want to get your offer accepted, make sure that your agent is picking up the phone. And we briefly talked about it already, but really driving the message home in regards to what is your seller looking for? Like, is there anything you can share with me that could help me make sure that I structure this as best as possible? Because although I'm not going to legally be able to disclose to you what other offers we have, like actually what is the number that we have on other offers, right? Or the terms, I can share with you because it's in the best interest for my client what we're looking for, right? Is it maybe a longer closing time frame? Is it maybe a shorter closing time frame? Is it maybe more down payment? Is it maybe, you know, waiving your appraisal? What is it that they're looking for? And again, this is in a case by case situation because if the house has been on the market for a long time and there's no other offers, there's no reason why you should be calling me send an offer, right? But if you're in a situation where the house is getting a lot of attention and you see it and you know that, then talk to the listing agent and just find out like, hey, what is it that we can do to set ourselves apart from the rest of the competition? I'm telling you that will go a long way. Unfortunately, there's a lot of people nowadays that, um, they think that writing a love letter is helpful. Love letter being a letter to the seller of why they really want to buy the house. And I'm telling you, unfortunately, they don't care, okay? If you're the seller and you're selling a house, now okay, depending on the situation, because there's some people that really, they're just like selling the house and they're really not hurting for money. But for the most part, some people, they wanna actually get back what they invested in the house, right? They wanna get the most for their house. Um, in a situation like that, you're not gonna care about what that love letter says, right? It's like, look, the numbers ain't mathing, right? Like, I need to know what you're willing to pay for my house because I am going to actually sell it for the highest bidder. And this is where it's important because if you're in a situation where your realtor didn't advise you this appropriately and didn't say, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, um, you know, let's really look out for these things of the contract or on the flip side, hey, buyer, I really recommend that instead of writing that nice letter that you saw on HDTV that we should do, I would actually recommend that we waive the contingency of the appraisal, or I would suggest that we lower the financing approval timeframe. There's little tweaks that you can do in the contract that are really gonna help you. And let's say you're selling a house and you need to buy the house that you're now, again, you need to sell to buy, right? A lot of sellers don't like contingencies about that because think about it, it's like me telling you, hey, 
I want you to stop dating other people and talking to other people, but I'm not gonna marry you. Like, you know, like we're, we're just like, you know, I'm not gonna commit. That wouldn't work, right? That wouldn't work in the real world. That's the same thing you're doing when it comes down to a seller. If you're telling the seller you're serious about, you know, you know, wanting the house, then if there's a contingency in place, at least have your house on the market already, have it staged, have it up and ready. But if there's a lot of people that come and try and make an offer, but then their house is still not even under contract, that is a no, no. And I'm telling you, if you have somebody that is advising you correctly, if you're a buyer, they would have already told you to put it on the market before even showing you houses. And if you're the seller, they would tell you, let's check to make sure that it is listed before we even consider that offer. Now, another very important thing to get your offer accepted. Okay. This is something that a lot of people, get very mixed up on and that is making sure that you have your financing fully approved. There's two types of approval. There is a pre-qualification and a pre-approval. The pre-approval is when your file has gone through underwriting, like your file has physically gone through A and B and C and D, and now you're actually under a full approval. And now when you're shopping for houses, it's not like you're qualified, so you're fully approved to buy a house. Therefore, you can waive the contingency of the, of the uh, approval. And now what would happen is that you can go ahead and actually tell the seller, Hey, I'm fully approved. Like there's no contingency here. I'm ready to go versus I'm pre-qualified. I still need 10, 17 days to get fully pre approved. That's a red flag because if you think about it, it's the equivalent to going to the store and trying to buy something, but you're like, Hey, I might have the credit on my card or I might not have the credit on my card but just, just, I'm good for it. I'm gonna leave you with a card here and I'm gonna come back in a few days and you know, maybe I have the money to buy it or if not, you know, I won't have the money to buy it. It wouldn't work that way, right? So making sure that you're fully approved is super helpful. And if you are a cash buyer, make sure that you have your proof of funds. Proof of funds is a bank statement that shows that you have monies in the bank account, okay? Um, a lot of investors out there, they like to, go and buy these properties from like our sellers um, or vice versa. And even though I'm an investor myself, I'd rather just be transparent with you and tell you what it is because honestly, then that's when you get the bad rep of investors are just in it for the money and this whole thing, right? I think everybody, I and mean, we're not working for, you know, hugs and kisses, but you can take care of people and be honest with them, right? And not take advantage of somebody. But anyways, a lot of people sometimes will try and say, hey, um, well, I want to buy your house. I have cash. And then you're like, Oh, okay, cool. Send me the proof of funds. They're like, well, um, it's not cash. It's actually like a hard money lender, but it's kind of like cash. It's like, no, it's not cash. It, it, it's like a hard money lender. And yes, the contingencies are a lot less. And yes, it's a lot easier to get the approval because it's a higher interest rate for the investor. And therefore, for the most part, you really shouldn't have a problem for the most part, but it's not cash. So just being very upfront about that so that you have your financing lined up and you have no problems. I'm telling you it's helpful. It's going to make sure that you get your offer accepted and it's going to avoid any headaches down the road. And another super helpful thing to get your offer accepted is ensuring that you know what you are buying. What do I mean by this? Well, if you have done your work by working with the right agent, you've done your work by working with the right lender and you have your approval and you worked with, you know, making sure that you found the right house that you like and you have made sure that your agent, you know, called and really put their best foot forward for you on your behalf, right? To really present your offer. Then now really the most important thing is just making sure that when you know what you're buying, it's either, okay, am I going to buy this house? because I'm okay with doing some work or am I going to expect unrealistic things? Because I'm telling you, the last thing you want is to pay for an appraisal, pay for an inspection, pay earnest money, pay option money, waste your time. And then at the end of the day, the inspection comes back and then you find out mm, that house is falling apart. I know that I saw a hole in the living room, but I thought it was going to be like cosmetic. So I really didn't worry about it. And then later you're upset. And then later you don't get your earnest money back because you're already past your option period. And then it's just a hassle. It's just a headache and you got your offer accepted all for nothing. So making sure that you know what you're buying, talk to your agent, whether it's, Hey, you know what? I really want something that's brand new or you know what? I am okay with some TLC, but nothing major, right? Something very basic, something very, you know, minimalistic. Yeah. Maybe some paint. Yeah. Maybe some carpet, 
but I need to know what it is that I'm getting myself into. And at that point, depending on the price point, depending on the price point, and depending on how much attention that house has, then maybe you can get away with before getting under contract, doing an inspection period. Maybe you can get away with getting an inspection done before you're officially under contract. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't happen that much. And it typically happens in higher price points. Like the last one we did was a house of $850,000 where the buyers were representing the buyers, we were representing the seller. And I told my seller before we make a call, an offer, um, my buyer wants to actually make an inspection, make sure everything is good. They did the inspection, everything was good. We went under contract. So it's on a case by case scenario. But with that being said, I do have a free resource for you. It is a seller guide that we have put together to really help you in understanding what is involved in real estate. And it is a buyer guide that we've also put together to help you in your A to Z process of buying a home. With that being said, I want to thank you so much for sticking around watching this full video. If you got any value from this video, I would highly, highly appreciate a subscribe and a comment down below if there's anything of value that you